According to the National Alliance for Caregiving, more than 65 million people in the U.S. are unpaid family caregivers, and many of them likely caring for elderly loved ones, a labor of love that can be stressful. Joining us today is the author of a new book that tackles every aspect of caregiving for the elderly. It's called Elder Care, the essential guide to caring for your loved one and yourself. And author Derek McDaniel is joining us today. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Really, I have to say that, and I'm assuming this was perhaps your intention, that I do feel like that this is a guidebook yes. um, for a place in our lives that many of us are going to find ourselves in. Very definitely. Um, and why don't you just explain to us first why it was important with you to share all the things that you learned going through this process. Okay, well, the, the reason that I wrote the book and the reason it was so important for me to share this information is because when I did go through it with my grandmother, I couldn't find a resource out there that provided the answers that I needed. The, the resources that were out there basically fell into two separate categories. One was the academic category, and the other ones just felt like promotional, um, promotional guidebooks mm -hmm. from one company or another one. So nothing really spoke to me about the, the actual practical questions that I had. So I ended up becoming a member of the elder care industry from mm -hmm. the, the things that I learned while caring for my grandmother. And so, and I continued to look for resources for clients. I never found one, so I eventually decided just to write the book myself. Yeah. And uh, the book is a, an interesting combination of questions that I had and then answers that I could provide as an industry professional. And I, honestly, it, it is an easy read. Uh, which it, I, which was is the objective of, yes. a, of a book like this, and it was so personal. Um, that was one of the things I liked about it, and it really did make me think of some things that, quite honestly, I think a lot of us put off as long as we can. Very definitely. Um, because we don't want to have to think about suddenly, you know, becoming almost a parent to our parent. Yes. Now, you went through this with your grandmother. Yes. Uh, which I found really endearing. Uh, yeah. It was informative. Um, but it, and it also gives, I think, the book its heart. Because you talked about some, some of the stuff was funny. Um, I laughed <laughs> about funny. it. Yeah. yeah. And um, now, is that why you felt like you really had something to share with other people? Because the experience, you said it opened you up in so many ways, go mm -hmm. caring for your grandmother. Well, it, it really did. When, when this process started, I was not in intending to become a caregiver. Mm -hmm. uh, the long and the short of it is my mother was sort of the designated uh, caregiver for my grandmother in our family and then she passed away unexpectedly mm -hmm. and when that happened the the mantle of caregiving sort of fell to me and at that time I was working on Wall Street I was teaching at NYU and this was a this was a shock to the system so to speak yeah. and the, the truth of the matter is though right now in America one in three adults identify themselves as being a caregiver. The most recent survey is that 46% of adults say that they expect in their lifetime to be a caregiver to an elderly person. So it, this impacts so many different people in so many different ways. But I think a lot of people are probably ill prepared to take on the job because there's so different. many things, the financial aspect, yes. the emotional aspect, yes. um, the, the medical aspect, the mm -hmm. physical, there's so many things that you need to know. And in your book, you really walk people through those various things, you know, getting a power of attorney, perhaps, um, mm -hmm. you know, having to deal with, you know, who the beneficiaries are in a given situation. Uh, another important one I think that you point out that some of us uh, probably uh, downplay and aren't prepared for is having to negotiate with siblings and other family members about who's doing oh, yeah. what and, and, and mm. all of this. Um, you you mm. lay it out and you make it seem like, honestly, after reading through the book, I thought, you know, it is doable. Yes. It's difficult, but it's doable. Well, at, at the end of the day, what this comes down to is preparation, preparation, preparation. As you said, most people sort of put it off, they ignore it, they hope that it doesn't happen, and it, it doesn't work that way for most mm -hmm. folks. The, the long and short of it is I tell people, approach elder care the way that you would approach contemplating having children. <laughs> um, and because there are so many similarities to it. Um, think about how much time it will be 
will be dedicated to this. Think about um, the financial commitment that you're going to have to make. Think about the adjustments that you're going to have to make. To and if once you start thinking about it, then you can start putting things in place because at the end of the day, the amount of preparation that you put into elder care will very definitely define the standard of care that your loved one receives and the impact that it will have upon you in terms of stress and aggravation. So it's, it's preparation is the key thing. And your book does uh, point out the fact that it, in addition to making all those preparations for your loved one, mm -hmm. you really do have to make sure you're taking care of yourself. And you Absolutely. compare it to the oxygen mask falling in the airplane. If the mask come yeah. down, you put yours on first, and then you help everybody else. Well, you can't care for someone else if you've passed out from oxygen deprivation. And that, that's what it really comes down to, because no matter what your situation is, whether you're caring for a person at home or whether they're in some sort of long-term residential facility and you have people hired to take care of them, you will always be your care, your care recipient's primary caregiver. And so it's really important that you take care of yourself. Um, when you look at the caregivers, most people get so invested in caring for their loved one that they forget to take care of themselves. And just a, a few facts that are, are really important here. Um, caregivers have higher incidences of serious illnesses. Uh, depression is a huge issue. Four out of, excuse me, 40 to 70 percent of people um, who are caregivers say that they suffer from depression and by the way a great book that we recommend to a lot of folks on that one is terry williams black pain mm -hmm. on that one it's it's um because and i dedicate a chapter in the book to depression um because it is such a big thing and i'm so, gonna have to cut you off because we're running out I, of time but the I book understand. is elder care the essential guide to caring for your loved one and yourself yes thank you so much for being with us derek we appreciate it thank you for having me we'll be right back <laughs>